Time to react to Todd's video. So his video is titled Top 10 Things Dontrell Needs to Be a Massive Success. And I am very excited to watch this video. I've been waiting quite a while. I had to like, I had to like avoid them. I had to avoid Todd and everyone talking about it in Florida, like the flag. I remember sitting there and being like, don't talk about your video around me. I haven't watched it yet. Don't spoil it for me. Get right into it. This is my top 10 wishlist updates for Final Fantasy XIV's upcoming expansion, Dawn Trail. Uh, these are in no particular order, except for maybe the last one, something I really want to see added to the game. So please, be sure to watch to the end. Does it sound Let's good? get started. Number 10, housing. Oh. Buying a private house can take longer than clearing an ultimate raid. <laughs> You're going to pull your hair out trying to bid on a house on a popular data center. So how do we fix this? <laughs> With instance housing options. Why not just make it so you can build your secluded mansion on your island? No, nah, okay, dude, I already need to pause. No, nah, the thing about instant housing, though, is that do you, okay, I have ran into so many people that have such a gatekeeper take on housing. They think that if you own a house, you're like so much better than everyone else in the game. So they, so they, they don't want instant house, they don't want instant housing because having a house makes you better than everyone. And if you don't have a house, you're a loser so if you get instant housings that means more people can have a house and that means having a house isn't as cool anymore so people so when todd says this i can't wait to go read his comment section i can't wait to people being like no that's such a stupid idea gatekeep houses Maybe yeah and there, there are fcs and there there are some fcs and there's some like okay there are places in balmung where certain people like a group of people or one individual person like owns an entire ward and it's it's crazy dude i shame you didn't get a house stare at obnoxious lawn decorations in our neighbor's yard and we'd like a bit more privacy so only our friends can come over or those with a password if we had the option to build our own house on the island it could honestly free up a lot of real estate in the standard wards or just add more wards a lot more yeah but let's no, have that's a good choice cool too places like who wants void housing an underwater Ruby Sea housing. That would be cool. A residential district in the Crystarium or Old Charleian. That would be awesome. Or maybe, if you're a Chrono Trigger fan like me, you'd like to have a neighborhood in Elpis, oh. where your home is on a magical floating island in the sky, like the Kingdom of Zeal. Bottom line, players want housing, and we just need more. So let's help the homeless of Eorzea. Number nine. Okay, how many of you in chat have a house? Type a one if you have a house and type a two if you don't have a house. I really want to see this. I have a house. I have a small. Oh my God, everyone's typing, everyone's typing one. You have a large. Yeah, I have a small and I got very lucky. I used to have a medium, but it was on Dynamis. So, okay. Now, now everyone's saying that they have a house. How many of you have a house on Dynamis? If you have a house on Dynamis, that doesn't count because no one fu- No one- No one does shit on Dynamis! No one does anything on Dynamis! The entire reason of, like, oh, I'm on Dynamis, probably to have a house is so stupid! You have three bits to get a house on Crystal? Oh my god, you have a house on Crystal? Dude, you're lucky. Cross data center problems. There are a lot of folks who live on Primal, Crystal, than that other one who haven't seen their home server or free company in months, maybe years. Why? Because they're parked on Aether using its party finder and faster, busier queues. What can be done about this? Well, a few things. Number one, have a singular party finder listing for an entire region so people can hang out where they please and have access to the things they need on their home DC. Or if that's too much, why don't we just allow FC buffs and chest access even while visiting another DC? Well, that would be it's good. That would be nice. Link shell stop working. You're simply unable to use many of the features of the game yeah. because you want to be on a more populated DC. Yeah, data ever center. ever since cross DC travel came out and everyone started raiding on Aether, I personally was one of those. I was one of those people who was I raided a lot. I raided every single day. And my, my character was originally on Crystal. So when Cross DC Travel came out, I was always I was either always on Primal or I was either always on Aether. And then when Top and Anabasius came out, I was always, always on Aether, where it got to the point where I was never on my home server. I was never able to access my retainers. I was never able to use my FC buff because I was always on Aether raiding. So I think if I could have stayed on Crystal but still seen the Aether buff, that would have been awesome. I was on I was on Dynamis for like a month and then I went I went to I went to Pro, I went to Aether, but no Cross DC Party Finder would be 
awesome. But also, having cross DC party finder means all the servers on Aether are a lot less congested. Uh, uh, there has been a couple of times that the Genova servers or a few servers on Aether have crashed because of how many people are on the servers. You remember that one day that I started stream and I logged into the game? And the server I was on on Aether, Genova, it was just down. It was just gone. It, like, you could not log into Aether. So our raid got canceled that day because there's always so many people on Aether that sometimes the servers just crash. ...to run content. Let's allow trading or mailing your alts or even just being able to add your alts to your friends list. Hoarders would rejoice and inventories uh, would appear... I'm sorry, dude. His retainer's name is Mrs. Llama. Aww. That's so cute! Christine, once you're able to offload Aww. your trinkets and collectibles you've been saving since Realm Reborn, give us access to retainers and mailboxes, regardless of where yeah. you're visiting. Yeah, it's see, that's the thing that makes no sense to me. Why the f can't you access your retainer if you're on a different data center? I understand not being able to sell stuff on the market board if you're on a different data center, but you should at least be able to access your retainer. Go back and forth to different DCs to get anything done. I'm happy we're able to travel. It's a good start, but it can definitely be improved and streamlined a bit more. Number eight, account-wide updates. Some of us have an alt addiction, and it can be a pain to manage all of them. Redo story, unlock dungeons and raids, you name it. What I would love to see is the ability to have account-wide character progression so you can easily have things like flying unlocked, Aether Currents, Map Discovery, Shared Seasonal Quest Completion, and even Past Raid Tiers Unlocked. Okay, Maybe Sorry. this could be a- Correct me if I'm wrong, but in World of Warcraft, once you- once you get to like the end of the- like Dragonflight, once you get to the end of Dragonflight and you make an alt account, it starts in Dragonflight, right? You don't have to do the entire story again. Why doesn't 14 just do something like that? World of Warcraft does it. Why can't 14 do it? Because I, I, I played WoW very briefly, and that I, from what I can remember is that when I finished leveling my main character, my alt was already immediately already immediately able to access stuff in Dragonflight, right? But yeah, I think this, this, this is good. This a choice good. when you start a new character, since there are some who enjoy a clean, fully immersive you playthrough. Skip. The skips are expensive. For those who just want another character to help on other DCs and servers, it doesn't really add extra value to your gaming experience, and certainly not to your time, when you have to go back and unlock a million things. You're not getting anything new from it, and I would appreciate the convenience. I'd also like to see minions, mounts, glamours, anything cosmetic to be applied count-wide. Especially my 1.0 Mark of the 12, I need to flex that as much as possible. I hate getting scammed from the online shop, purchasing the same item for multiple characters. I feel like- Nah, nah, nah. They do that on purpose, so you have to buy it on every character so they get more money. The reason why if you buy Dote, you only get it on one character, because they want you to buy it multiple times, so you buy it on every single character that you use actively, because then they get more money out of it. It's the same with job skips, and it's the same with story skips. They- it just- it gives them more money. Those it's- it's a business shared. thing. Emotes, achievements, and many of our cosmetic items should all be shared as well. What if we extended our glamour dresser to be account wide? We want to look good on our alts without all the hassle that comes with repeating content. Side note, maybe number 7.5, but SE, please fix your website. It's hard to navigate, <laughs> it doesn't remember your one-time login, and it's probably the biggest deterrent of new players who can't figure Dude, out I how to register. Website. Number seven cosmetic additions now we are getting additional it's options, so bad no no actually i'm todd just said it's it's a really big deterrent for a lot a lot of players when i first started playing final fantasy 14 i almost gave up on trying to start the game because i could not figure out how to how to get in i couldn't figure out how to log in on the client i couldn't figure out how to make an account it was so frustrating that but thankfully i had a friend who helped me also this is a great pause screen more ways to customize the look of our glamours. I think the die system from Guild Wars 2 is an amazing example of what we could have. Imagine permanently learning the dyes that you've obtained and having up to three ways to color your clothes. This needs to happen. It would also be I mean, cool if you could dye your chocobo barding too. Dawn Trail. Let's increase the number of glamour plates. Yeah, there's not we enough. We just don't have enough. 
I want more, and right now we're very limited. I also think we should take a hard look at WoW's collection and transmog system, because having that in Final Fantasy XIV would be amazing. You can see what pieces you own, what you're missing, you can even preview how it looks on your character. You'd be able to create multiple outfit sets or wish lists to track down. There are a few things that World of Warcraft does a lot better than Final Fantasy XIV. World of Warcraft's glamour system is so... It's miles and miles and miles better than XIV system. And another thing that WoW does a lot better than XIV, it's their dungeons. WoW dungeons are so unbelievably fun, especially Mythic dungeons. They are so fun. I guess you can't die in WoW, but their whole, like, transmog system kind of makes up for the lack of dies. I love WoW's transmog system, and I love WoW dungeons. I don't think Final Fantasy XIV dungeons are that fun. The ones that have, the ones that are tied to the MSQ are okay, but, dude... It is so annoying pulling two trash packs, you kill a boss. Two trash packs, kill a boss. Two trash packs, kill a boss. It is so unbelievably annoying. I know it's a spicy take, but good, I'm saying that. WoW does dungeons better than Final Fantasy XIV does. And Sammy, I saw your message. Thank you. And we're watching Llama Todd's video. Even see where to find certain pieces of gear. If it's crafted, uh, a boss drop. But okay, to add on to that, Final Fantasy XIV does high-end rating better than WoW does. WoW does dungeons better, 14 does raiding better. All of this info could be at our fingertips, making it much easier to hunt down that certain look you were going for. After all, fashion is the true in-game content. No, 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 no. Glamour is not the true end-game. Fishing. Fishing is the true end-game content, Todd. Big, big mistake, man. Big mistake. Adventurer plates and portraits need to be tweaked. Portraits shouldn't break as often, so we're met with a default yearbook blank stare when we change anything. I think we should expand the selection of poses, even unique ones like Shiva, to get a wider selection Ooh. of action shots. And what if we could what? share a template of our design with others? Or even just be able to use it across our alts. We want to look good <laughs> And we definitely would keep it wholesome this time, right? Beards. We need more options, not some wispy, patchy chin strap. We need some fuller, okay. longer beards, not limited to just Highland Hewers. Give us more ways to customize our beards. I will and say. And maybe in red, so we can look like our favorite bald streamer. Butts. I was just about to say, he's either saying that he wants beards because he wants more cosmetic options, or it's because Xeno wants them so unbelievably bad. I would think beards would be a really nice thing to add to the game. Also facial hair too, like better mustaches, better beards. I think, I think like if you could get like pork chop, or what are they called? Like those little pork chops on the side and then goatees, nice little, nice little mustaches with the little twirls though. So more facial hair would be awesome. You can make your characters look a whole lot sexier. Also great pause. Yes, I know. This Button has chops. been requested over and over again. But all the butts in our game are flat, unless we wear 2B leggings, and that's it. That's our only option, 2B or not to be. If we had a butt slider, we could actually enjoy wearing other pants and leggings while showing off our backside Ooh. with a set of squats. Honestly, actually, more dude, choice. Why the hell do we have a titty slider but we don't have a butt slider? Why can I make my character's breasts different sizes, but I can't make her ass fat as shit? That doesn't make any sense! ...is in character creation would put us on par with newer games, so our Warriors of Light feel less generic. <laughs> Lastly, Viera and Hrothgar need to be able to wear hats. I wish SE would devote resources into updating all of the helmets, hats, and trash cans to adequately protect their ears. Having all of these cosmetic updates and more variety into our customization would be phenomenal and a must-have for future games if you want to stay competitive. Number six. This is a big one. Raid and dungeon content. I think the I biggest problem know what he's, what he's saying about this. is facing here is that there's barely any mid-core content. Yo, what do it's I mean me! I it's me! It's me! It's me! Look! Look, it's me! I'm in the video! The person with the one on them, that's me! Sorry. I say that. Well, probably something about as hard as an extreme trial somewhere in that ballpark area. Easier than Savage, but 
harder than normals. I feel things are either too easy or too hard for your average player, yeah. and we need more mid-level content or even a progressive difficulty dungeon system. I want to look at this. Normal, Unreal, Extreme Savage, Ultimate, Propose. Oh my god! See, look! I literally mentioned this earlier. I said, I said if they, I, I said if they did something kind of like, it was an auto marker, we would mark people manually. But I think, um, having a mythic style dungeon system in 14 would be awesome. Because a lot of people would be like, well, mythic, mythic rating can be too hard. That's why you don't go higher than like an 8 or a 9 or a 10. You go as hard as you want to go. That way, these players gradually improve their skills and learn their jobs so that Savage and Beyond mm -hmm. will be far less daunting. The amount of times I've seen people come from like very basic, only doing MSQ content and only doing normal raids and they go into extremes and then go into, they go into extremes and they have absolutely no idea how to do the rotation is a bit ridiculous. I do think having content that's a little bit harder than normal but not as difficult as extreme would be good because then it allows people to actually be introduced to a dps check that requires you to actually know the rotation to your job but it isn't like an insane dps check like there would be in savage or extremes on release variant and criterion dungeons are a great start to this but i feel they're one and done in most cases yeah they are perhaps if we had a mythic plus style dungeon system or something that allowed us to replay our favorite dungeons from past expansions. Yeah. But they are yeah, far more I challenging. Yeah, like, I feel like there's a lot of players who want Mythic Plus style dungeons, not just me and not just Todd. Hey, I'm down for Mythic Plus and time walking in 14, or simply just an extension of our Unreal Trials, applying it to dungeons and raids. Give us more rewards too. We need to incentivize dungeons as well. Maybe oh, we have... The floor being super low is fine for casuals, but there needs to be some form of onboarding for extreme content. Yeah, I think I think the floor and main scenario content is OK right now because there are a lot of people that play this game purely for the story, purely for the casual aspect, purely for the social aspect. There are some people who spend hundreds upon thousands of hours of gameplay, but they never actually touch any more difficult content. I know like. I'm going to use my sister as an example. My sister has been playing this game since um, Heaven's Ward, and she she barely Savage Raids. She's probably one of the most casual players that I know, and, like, there needs to be more content for people like her, too. And whenever I take her into Savage, I'm kind of surprised at how little she knows about the optimization of her rotation. It's because she's never been forced, or she's never needed to learn to optimize it or learn her rotation in its in its in its full have unique trinkets and accessories that only work inside these special my door. dungeons let us earn side grades twines shines glamour items dyes please right. just anything other than boring <laughs> materia i feel that's just a lazy <coughs> sorry oh i'll hold that one in see reward I also think Alliance gear should be equal in eye level to Savage gear, because basically it's just a cosmetic piece of armor. It would help gear up our second, third, fourth, however many jobs that you have a bit faster than praying for the right drops in Party Finder. By making this gear on par with Savage, you give players a reason to run it for more than just a coin and a chance at a glamour piece. Increase the I think if they make Alliance Raid gear worth more, that they need to make Alliance Raids a bit harder. Alliance Raids, as they are right now, are so unbelievably easy to the point where it's just, I don't want to run them anymore. I hate running Alliance Raids. When I go into my Alliance Raid roulette, I always get so excited when I get like a Heaven's Word Alliance Raid or... A storm blood alliance raid because they you know there's so many people who are gonna die so many people are gonna mess in the county and it's gonna be a lot of fun but then you get like you get the n walker alliance and you're just like pepe w man the only fun and difficult n walker alliance raid was aglia i will never forget day one aglia watching everyone get slapped off of that hand that was probably some of the best fun i've ever had like doing a doing a fight on release aglia aglia was awesome but then you for sign and whatever the new one is they're just they're just not fun
they're not fun i think they're good i think the story is good but the fights themselves there's just there's nothing new to it there's nothing engaging about it that makes it like interesting to want to do you don't you don't want to farm those alliance rates because it's just it's just it's not fun i know it's relative but i do think that i do think that alliance raids need to be a bit more difficult because alliance raids aren't main scenario content i think anything that isn't directly tied to the main scenario and the msq and like base story stuff it should be a little harder tombstone cap and unlock the raid sooner just a little the very next patch after a raid tier is released is when we should have them unlocked so we can farm them it will take you several months otherwise to gear up two to three jobs especially if you don't have a static yeah. to farm with the fact waiting the fact that okay if you are a normal person that plays savage you clear like week one week two you will only have time to gear up one job before the ultimate comes on and not a lot of people know exactly what job they want to do day one like day one of the ultimate the fact that you can really only have one job geared up by the time the ultimate comes on is pretty ridiculous like i guess let me let me use let me use um top as really good example um i originally wanted to go astro but astro wasn't that good in top on patch white mage was so much more viable because of the damage and there were a lot of different jobs like that that were more uh, so much more viable in prog because of how difficult top was on patch eight months for a tier to unlock is far too long that's ridiculous raiders can be locked into a single role or job if there's an ultimate raid being released right after a savage tier additionally we could have more raiders being able to flex multiple roles in Party Finder to help their friends and pugs clear content, while also not screwing them out of loot because they've already cleared for the week. Yep. Some jobs best in slot also requires a ton of tombstones, so you're out weeks if you want to gear up something. I love spamming my roulettes every single day so I can gear my jobs up. It is so much fun. I love doing the same two dungeons every single day for weeks and months on end. It's so much fun, so much joy. It brings me so much happiness. Anything else? I would love to see these restrictions relaxed a you bit. You love pausing too. You may even see more Party Finder groups as a result. Number five, Party Finder and Raid Tools. Cross DC Party Finder listings. I mentioned this before, but it's worth bringing up again. A master listing would be awesome. We should yep. be able to access a central PF based on our region. I'd also like to be able to join listings on alts if I've cleared on my main and make it so it shows which role I've cleared a fight on. I want to be able to communicate with a PF leader as much as possible without having to hop on different characters to prove anything. Okay. What if we had a native Whoa, what's this? leader? In this isn't from the game, Todd. In game 14 does not do a great job of preparing you for in-game content imagine stone sky c but you could pick your raid and mechanics you want to practice this wouldn't be readily available on release of a new raid tier but perhaps add it to a later patch to help struggling players beat the learning curve without having to feel any yep, embarrassment failing in pugs with be? other players this is the number one reason i hear why some people don't raid they don't want to wipe the group. Well, now they'd have a chance to practice on their own time to gain that confidence they need to join a pug or learning party. If that's too much to ask, then what if we expanded the Hall of the Novice to have higher difficulty challenges? We could have the Hall of the Raider, which will teach- I think that would be good. Tank swaps. But I also think checks. wiping the party is is the whole point of progging it's learning you're learning as a team it's 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 dude it's an eight-man party everyone's gonna fuck up you kind of you kind of need to fuck up in the fight to learn how the mechanics work <laughs> dropping tank busters on friends no dude the amount of times i've actually gone killed by a tank buster because i didn't know the tank buster was a cleave it's happened too much defensive it's happened way too much management boss but dodge list Raid awareness of I hope you understand ally. that dodge lists are usually a joke, right? Dodge lists are sometimes made by people who just spend their entire time on this game and have nothing better to do in their life than to make them. There are not a lot of dodge lists that are pretty serious. And I think putting someone on a dodge list because they made a few mistakes in one party is... is dumb. I don't know. I don't look at them. And then 
maybe a Hall of the Savage Champion after you graduate from that one with even more intense scenarios. Or we could be sneaky and teach raid mechanics through the mini games in the Gold Saucer. There's definitely a need to have more training tools to help aspiring raiders tackle challenging content. Number four. Oh yeah, no, 14 is really horrible at explaining a lot of stuff in this game. I don't think four does, okay. So 14 doesn't explain how a lot of, a lot of like managing your aggro works, tank swapping works. They don't explain to you, uh, like they don't explain to you how your rotation works in depth, really. I think one of the most, I remember when I first started the game, I had no idea what a job stone was until I was like level 50 and some random person came up to me and they were like, you're like a level 50 conjurer. Why don't you have your job stone? That's why add-ons are king. But add-ons are against TOS. You can't use them. The chat window. My main problem with the chat window has to do with its But then a lot of thing is that the game does have tutorials, but you have to go out of your way to find the tutorials inside of the game, which is also a really really big issue in my opinion often when you receive a tell and try to respond or invite them to your party I you're instead this met oh with my an god error. if you have an option in a menu it should just work you shouldn't have to <laughs> open up your social tab and drill down to your friends list or cross world link shelf for the same result just because it's broken in chat please fix these menus also chat bubbles NPCs have them, and we want that option, especially if you're an RP enjoyer. Number three, link shells. I it's think my wish to are okay. only have link shells. Let's give them all cross world functionality, then just remove the bloat. I also can't remember the last time I used a fellowship, but I do know what I've seen when perusing the finder. I'd say remove them if they. What the f is a fellowship? Wait, where did he go for that? What is this? What is this? I don't know what those are. I've been playing the game for almost three years and I don't know what that is. Okay, let me, I'm gonna look at that after the video. They don't really serve much of a purpose or just give those features to existing link shells. We could this or just give those features I love working with your hands or working in some land. Become a MILF today. New and experienced players welcome. To existing okay, link then. shells. We could simply merge all of these features together into one cohesive communication tool. It's behind there. Then let's increase the member cap and the number of link shells you can join or create. We want to make it easier to socialize and communicate with our friends, static members, and online communities. Then we can stay connected to all of our link shells, regardless of what DC its members are on. Yeah. Number two. I feel like that's also really good because then there are also a lot of players that only go. So ever since cross DC travel mm -hmm. got introduced, I know so many people that only go to Aether to raid, but then they stay on Primal, they stay on Crystal, they stay on Dynamis for everything else. So if your static raids on Aether and you're in a crossword link shell with your static on Aether and they're trying to communicate to you on that crossword link shell, you can't see it when you're on a different data center. So I do think that is a very, that is a very good idea. That's a very good idea. I like that. Not much is known about this, but here's what I'd like to see. What if it were like a sandbox style environment? where you can build bases and other structures, collect resources, learn more and explore other worlds, and even earn new mounts, minions, crafting materials, you name it. It could very well be a reconstruction style instance where we help rebuild a zone over several phases, and I'm all for that. It needs to be a gigantic playground for all what? gatherers and crafters. Let's add some jump puzzles, uh, riddles, treasure maps, exploration dungeons chock full of materials to gather and refine this could also be a way to tie in crafting relics and their upgrades now i absolutely love what the way that the game like did the firmament and um the diadem farming in the firmament and far farming in the diadem especially for your relics 
was so much fun. They did such is the Ishgardian restoration thing is is so much fun. I really hope that cosmic exploration is a little bit like that because it it was it was awesome. It was so much fun. And then we got let me go what Island Sanctuary. <laughs> I remember hearing the horror stories of DNM 1.0. Oh my god. I'm excited at the potential this content has, and I hope it delivers in a big way. I love clicking and gathering finally, notes. Number one. If you know me, you probably guessed it. My biggest wish is for the friends list. It's I can't it stand the horrible. friends list. It takes forever to load, and anytime you hit any other menu, it closes it, causes you to reload, and wait for your whole list to repopulate. Not only that, but it's not clear who is truly online. You have to press you a little button beside them to see if they're actually online. And if it says they're online and you try to invite them to the party, it says, cannot locate a player with that name. And if you send a tell, you say, it says, cannot locate a player with that name. The amount of times I've been trying to invite someone off of my friends list to my party and it says that cannot locate a player with that name is absolutely insane. It is so infuriating. If they're actually on, why doesn't it just know this? We need no. Nah, the friends list is way too small, and the friend the way that this friends list works in general is really fucking bad. A modern friends list, one that instantly loads and doesn't care what server or DC people are on. We should also make it easier to sort through your friends too, and let's include a notes field. People change their notes names. Notes would be good. And yeah, I can't keep track of that. No, yeah, it no. The amount nice of times, the amount of times, like, let me look, let me, let me look at my friends list right now. The amount of times I've logged in and I've seen someone like change their name or it says something on the lines of like unable to retrieve. I really wish I could like, okay, now, now, now the name's gone because as the friends list is loading and you scroll through your friends list, it scrolls all the way back up. Be <laughs> I hate this friends list. But no, the people who say unable to retrieve, I wish you could keep a note beside it that says who this person is. Because now I have no idea who these people are. I have no idea who these are. Note so you know it's someone's alt or someone you made in a raid that was awesome to play with. Let us sort and filter by last seen online it's me. and make it much easier to remove and add people without repopulating the list every single time. Also, Blocking and unfriending should be a two-way removal system. Oh, yeah. I don't want to be seen on someone else's list if I remove them. It's awkward. And I don't want them to see me or to know that I'm online. If I remove them, my name should be removed from their list as well. Next, how cool is it when you hop into a dungeon and you randomly run into a buddy you didn't even know was online? Well, WoW has a great feature where you can see what your friends are up to in-game and even join their groups if they're cute. Oh up my for god, imagine that! Well, your friend needs a fourth man for expert? Well, let's jump in and help. Oh, they need some bodies to farm EX trials or do some savage prog. Hunt for some glamours, PvP. You use quick join to sync up with your buddies. I think we could benefit I love this. from this feature. This is awesome. I really hope Fortin gets something like this because that's happened to me a lot of times too, where my friends could like my friends could be in party they could be hosting parties. I have no idea. I wish I could log in, go to this section, and see exactly what all my friends are up to because that'll, that'll honestly save everyone probably a lot of time. And it could be extended to duty finder, party finder, pretty much any instance content. You can see what your friends are up to and just join them. It'll keep us more connected. We should also have the ability to send print requests if they're offline. It could just be a pending request. Imagine that. Or we could just have the friends list available even when you're not inside the game it could be something much like how steam has its friends list set up or how battlenet does it you simply just have to have the launcher up and you can access your friends list and hey maybe we can even this wouldn't work though because you can run 14 on multiple different launchers and this is typically this these friends lists here are typically they're, they're the launcher side of things so something like this Although I really do like it, it just, it wouldn't work for 14. And extend that to the link shells that we're in, so we can further enhance our communication. We kind of already that, have that a version of That feature is in the friends list, though. You can see the PF icon beside their name. Oh, really? I can see the PF icon beside my friend's name. Yeah, okay. I can see the PF icon beside my friend's name. If they're on the same server as me, you see all these mother that are on the same server as me? I have no idea what they're up to unless I go to their server. 
and then check. So you think I want to travel to eight different servers every time I log in to see if all my friends are doing something? No, I don't want to do that. See, okay, look, I have one friend right here who's doing something, but that's because they're on the same server as me. All my other friends that are online, I can't, I don't know if they're doing anything because I'm not on the same server as them. I don't know if they have a PF up, but it's not just, but also that also, that also means that your friend is hosting the PF. I think if your friends are in PFs, you should be able to see the PF that they're in. Companion app, but it only communicates from app to app with no messages going to friends in game. It's also mobile only, so there's no native desktop chat client. There seems to be a framework for a chat client. We just need to be able to talk to our friends. Oh my God, I know. You can't have you on the same DC. No, you can't. I cannot see what my friends are doing. I'm on the same data center as them right now, but I can't see what they're doing. Look, I can't see what Iridians, I can't see what any of them are doing. PF, you can. No, this is stupid. This is a dumb friends. List. This friends, list, it sucks. It is stinky. Don't even try to argue on it. Link shells in game. Front. Truth equals ban. Additionally, having the sorting features, notes, and seeing what your friends are doing would be a godsend. This has potential to strengthen our community and to more easily connect with our friends who may not use Discord or hang out on Twitch. With the current state of link shells being unreliable, an update is sorely needed. Then we should have the ability to set our privacy level so we can be displayed as online or invisible or do not disturb. Maybe we're in a progression setting. Uh, whatever the reason, but we should have some more customization to our friends list and should be way more functional and user friendly than we currently have. Please, please, please update the friends list. Yeah, they really need to. It's well, horrible. That's all I got for now. What would you like to add to your own wish list? Let me know in the comments below and please like and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video. Thank you I like so the much video. for watching. I think that's a good I think that was a good video. I think that was a good video.